We are now at the final chapter of the book. You might recall the frequent use of the word, surrender, before. Some may disagree with this idea because accepting things as they are without trying to improve could be harmful. Tall clarifies that surrender doesn't mean passively accepting every situation and doing nothing. It also doesn't mean giving up on making plans or taking positive actions. Imagine you're stuck in the mud. Surrender doesn't mean saying, okay, I accept being stuck. It's not resignation. You don't have to embrace an undesirable situation or pretend it's okay. Instead, you acknowledge that you want to change it. Focus on the present moment without judging it. This means no resistance or negative emotions. Accept the reality of the moment, and then take positive action to get out of the mud. This kind of action is more effective than negative actions driven by anger, despair, or frustration. Keep practicing surrender until you achieve the desired result, refraining from labeling the present moment. Imagine walking a path at night surrounded by thick fog. Your powerful flashlight cuts through the fog, creating a clear space in front of you, the now. The fog represents your life situation, past, and future. The flashlight symbolizes your conscious presence. As discussed, resistance is the opposite of surrender. Resistance not only affects your psychological state but also makes your body rigid. Tension arises, and the free flow of life energy is restricted, impacting overall health. In a state of surrender, you clearly see what needs to be done. Take focused action, addressing one thing at a time. Ask yourself, can I change, improve, or remove myself from the situation? If yes, take appropriate action. Don't overwhelm yourself with the multitude of future tasks, concentrate on the one thing you can do now. While planning is essential, avoid getting lost in future scenarios. Actions may not yield immediate results, so don't resist the present. If no immediate action is possible, and you can't leave the situation, use it to deepen your surrender to the now and being. Don't mistake surrender for an, I don't care, attitude. Such indifference often hides negativity like hidden resentment, which is a form of disguised resistance. When surrendering, check inside yourself for any lingering resistance. Be vigilant, as pockets of resistance may hide in dark corners as unacknowledged thoughts or emotions. Acknowledge the resistance when it arises. Observe how your mind labels situations, yourself, or others, and understand the thought process and emotional energy involved. By witnessing resistance and focusing on the present moment, you bring unconscious resistance to light, putting an end to it. Being conscious means being free from unhappiness or negativity because these feelings indicate hidden resistance. Now, what about dealing with people who try to use, manipulate, or control you? First, understand that those individuals are disconnected from their inner selves and they unconsciously seek energy and power from others. Here that is you. Only an unconscious person tries to manipulate, and also only an unconscious person can be manipulated. Resisting or fighting such behavior can make you unconscious too. However, surrender doesn't mean allowing yourself to be used. You can firmly say, no, or walk away while maintaining inner non-resistance. If you're in an unpleasant work situation and find surrender impossible due to persistent resistance, take immediate action. Speak up or initiate changes. Take responsibility for your life, avoiding negativity that can affect your inner being and the world around you. Refuse to let any form of unhappiness will stay you. Surrender will profoundly impact your relationships. If you can't accept what is, you're likely to struggle accepting people as they are. Judging, criticizing, labeling, rejecting, or trying to change others may become common. Additionally, if you consistently see the present only as a way to achieve future goals, you might treat people as means to an end. The actual relationship becomes secondary or even unimportant, when your primary focus is on what you can gain, whether it's material benefits, a sense of power, physical pleasure, or ego satisfaction. Let me illustrate how surrender can work in relationships. In the midst of an argument or conflict, especially with a close partner, observe your defensiveness when your position is challenged or the intensity of your aggression when challenging the other person. Notice the attachment to your views and opinions and the EGOIC mind's energy driving the need to be right. Acknowledge this EGOIC energy by fully feeling it. Then, in the heat of an argument, realize that you have a choice. You might decide to drop your own reaction to see what happens, a moment of surrender. 
This doesn't mean verbally conceding with a superior look on your face, which merely shifts the resistance to another level. True surrender involves releasing the entire mental emotional energy field within you that was fighting for power. This kind of surrender differs greatly from the inactivity often seen in the ordinary state of consciousness, driven by fear, inertia, or indecision. Real, doing nothing, involves inner non-resistance and heightened alertness. In situations requiring action, your response comes from conscious presence, not conditioned reactions. Your mind, free of concepts, including the idea of non-violence, allows unpredictable actions. The same principle applies to serious health conditions. Illness is part of your life situation, with a past and a future. The now's redeeming power activates when you're consciously present. If you dislike what you see in the mirror, attacking it is like non-acceptance. Attacking the image reflects back negativity. Acceptance and friendliness toward yourself, no matter the situation, fosters a positive response. This is how you contribute to changing the world. Illness isn't the problem. It's the EGOIC mind's control. When you're ill or disabled, don't see it as failure or unfair treatment. Avoid blaming life or yourself. In summary, when you fully surrender to the present moment, the past loses its power, and you no longer need it. Presence is the key, and the now is the key. How do you know when you've surrendered completely? The answer is when you no longer need to ask that question. This concludes the 10 chapters. It might be challenging to grasp all the wisdom at once, so consider revisiting and reflecting on these teachings. With time and effort, following these principles can lead you toward enlightenment. Thank you for staying with me. All the best on your journey.